Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, today's topic is is very impromptu, just like most of my podcasts. Um, I just finished doing a, a virtual tour from my study room, and the topic is the same that I will be doing in this for this podcast, and is talking about uh, what are the things, what are some of the things that are happening to some of our UNESCO World Heritage sites. Yep. So today the podcast is talking about. Um, one or two things that are that are happening to some of our world heritage sites in the world. According to the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, we now have 1154, which is 1,154 places on earth designated as UNESCO World Heritage Site. And in the country where I come from, which is Singapore, we only have just one. Um, interestingly, but unfortunately, in, the, in recent times, we have discovered that um, our beloved UNESCO World Heritage Sites have now been impacted. Uh, they are now being subjected to, to various impacts um, there are now risks and threats to some of our UNESCO World Heritage Sites located in the different parts of the world. Um, and part of this podcast, I will introduce you what are the different things that are causing the risk or the impacts to, to the UNESCO World Heritage Sites uh, in, the, in, the, in, in different parts of the world. Um, one of the things that we sometimes see, which has an impact on uh, on our heritage sites, on our world heritage sites, is uh, is is conflict. Um, there are countries where, because of a, a civil war, there is suddenly a lack of attention and resources towards conservation and the preservation of of uh, of such sites. Another reason which we also tend to see increasingly more and more common in the last few decades is mass tourism or what some of us re in recent times call over-tourism. The growth of the tourism industry, uh, which I come from, the, the growth of the tourism industry as more and more people travel, this also means that there are now many, many more people than in the past uh, who uh, who can be found in our UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Whether you are talking about the Great Wall of China or the Machu Picchu in South America uh, or, or some of the national parks in the places where you come from. Um, so the, the presence of so many people often also means that the, the problem of uh, rubbish or waste increases too. And so these are all... Uh, another risk that is facing that is facing some of our UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Natural disasters, for example, once in a while we, we hear of an earthquake um, in, in certain places uh, that, has, uh, that has created an impact on, uh, on some of the uh, World Heritage Sites in the country. Nepal, seven, eight years ago, had a, had a very heavy earthquake um, which hit the capital very hard and uh, and because of that one earthquake the country actually lost two UNESCO World Heritage Sites Overdevelopment I just shared in the in the virtual tour with a small group of people uh, citing the example which is a, quite a recent example of um, in the country Peru in South America the government wanted to or had plans to build an airport near Machu Picchu the uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site in the country. And uh, that plan to build an airport didn't go very well with people like U UNESCO and some of the local people in the country. Climate change and global warming, of course, and that's something that we shouldn't miss out, yeah, uh, always will have an impact on some of the World Heritage Sites. 
They discovered in the Great Barrier Reef in Queensland, Australia, that uh, close to 50% of the entire Barrier Reef, which measures around 2,230 something kilometers long, is now destroyed or close to destruction. Almost half of the Great Barrier Reef is seeing coral reefs that are dead and are, and, and are dying. Yep, and, uh, and they discovered that uh, two, two common reasons for coral bleaching, uh, one is over-tourism and then the other one is global warming when the temperatures of the water increases. Uh, this is not conducive for the, the, the growth and the presence of the, of the coral reefs. Yep. In Easter Island, Rapa Nui, another UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Moai statues that they are known for, um, the, the precipitation, increased precipitation and uh, the, the increase in temperatures, yep, global warming also has an impact on, uh, on, 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 the, on the Moai statue. And so this is another place uh, that is suffering from the impacts of climate change. And so our UNESCO World Heritage Sites, um, there is no, no more an urgent time than this to start considering and preparing and marshalling the different, different resources uh, that we need to reduce the damage to counter the effects, which in some cases could be possible. If not, all these places which represent our history, our cultural identity, our individual and our community identities, these places which represent our heritage, not just our culture, will soon be gone. So I thank you for listening to my podcast, um, rather impromptu, and I... Uh, I often do my podcasts without much preparation, although today I, I'm speaking to you after doing a session, so, so more or less there is some, some preparation done. Um, and I like to, be, to do things a bit impromptu. I mean, podcasts do it a, a little bit impromptu because uh, that's where you really test y yourself, right? So uh, sign up, take up our online courses. That will be uh, that will go a long way to keeping us afloat. Our online courses, the links can be found in uh, in in a few of our podcasts. Um, yep, if you if you look up look out for our for the links to our online courses. Um, today is April twenty seventh, uh, Wednesday, and I shan't keep you too long here. I wish you a good Wednesday and a good rest of the week. Uh, watch out for some more podcasts that we will be doing. We enjoy talking about various topics relating to responsible tourism. Bye-bye from a sunny, small little island called Singapore. Have a good week. Bye-bye.